Guten Tag. Welcome to Absolute and Reciprocal for Pre-Calculus Math 11. Today we're taking a look at reciprocals of linear functions. And this is a real graphing kind of thing. So hopefully you have a little bit of graph paper hanging around. Um, what is a reciprocal? Well, let's consider the reciprocal of the number x. So we got to guarantee x isn't 0. And the reciprocal of that is 1 over x. Similarly, we can take the reciprocal of a function, f of x as long as f of x doesn't equal 0, by writing 1 over f of x. So if we have a function like y equals x minus 2, we can write its reciprocal by just going y equals, and you really just flip it. You divide it by underneath 1, 1 divided by x minus 2. The graph of y equals 1 over x minus 2 has no x-intercept because there are no solutions to the no x-intercept, because there are no solutions to the equation, equation 0 equals 1 over x minus 2. Remember that the x-intercept occurs where the y value is 0. This means that the x-axis is called an asymptote. So what's an asymptote? Well, an asymptote of the graph, which is simply an imaginary line that the graph approaches. So it gets really, 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 really close. This holds true basically for any reciprocal. And since x can't equal 2, because it's a non-permissible value, so it's a non-permissible value of y equals 1 over x minus 2, the line x equal 2 becomes an asymptote as well. So that's also an asymptote. So what we're seeing is that the x-axis becomes an asymptote, and any non-permissible values from the equation become asymptotes. So determine the equation of the asymptote of y equals 1 over 3x minus 5. Well, we have certainly the x-axis. That's always the case. And we also have when 3x minus 5 equals 0. That becomes an asymptote. So that's 3x equals 5. That's x equals 5 thirds. So that's an asymptote of the equation. Now when we're talking about reciprocals, what we're talking about is just dividing one by a number. So other easy points to find on a reciprocal function are the invariant points. So that's another term you might want to remember, invariant points. Reciprocal of function is achieved by dividing one by various values. The values of y equals 1 and y equals negative 1 are both invariant points because the reciprocals remain the same. So what does invariant mean? Is that they stay in the exact same spot. So if you have a y value of 1 and you flip it, it's still 1. If you have a y value of negative 1 and you take the reciprocal of that, it's still negative 1. In terms of the graph, y equals 1 over f of x, invariant points will lay on the intersection of the function y equals f of x and the line y equals 1 and y equals negative 1. Basically, any time the y value is 1 or negative 1. So, for instance, consider the graph of 1 over 0.5x minus 2. So what we're going to do is let's first talk about first sketch a graph of what's in the denominator. I'm going to change the 0.5 to a half. y equals half x minus 2. So half x minus 2. Here's negative 2, rise 1, run 2, rise 1, run 2. So there's our original graph. What happens here is, let me change in red now, we have asymptotes. of the x-axis. How do we define an asymptote? Is we just draw a dotted line. A lot of times you won't really draw that in, but it's good to do it now. Of the x-axis. We also have an asymptote when the denominator equals 0. So where does a half x equals 0? And when a half x equals 2? And when x equals 4? Oh, well, for our purposes, 1, 2, 3, 4, x equaling 4 is where our linear equation crosses through the x-axis. So what we notice is that we get a vertical asymptote any time our original graph passes through the x-axis. And invariant points. So we're not totally graphing it here. 
Invariant points are where y equals plus or minus 1. So where is y equal 1? So there's y equals 1. Tracing across, we get a dot there. and just kind of miss the graph a bit. There's y equals negative 1. We get a big dot there. So those are the two invariant points on this graph. Other stuff happens. That's what we're going to work on next. So I have a bit of a step-by-step -step process here. It's based on a few of these steps, and you really got to try and follow these things. It makes your life a little bit easier. What we want to do is we want to start by graphing the equation in the denominator of the reciprocal. So here I'm going to do that in the kind of light blue. I'm going to graph y equals negative 2x plus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And you know what? Try and be a little bit precise about the dots that it hits. We have a slope of negative 2, so that's rising 2, running 1. Hopefully you can connect the dots a little bit straighter than I can. So there's y equals negative 2x plus 4. We have asymptotes. I know we have a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. Let me draw that one in. Uh, step 2, draw vertical asymptotes where the y value of the function is 0. So that's the x-intercept. So we know that's basically non-permissible values. Invariant points where the function equals 1 or negative 1. So there the y value is 1, if we think about our y values, and there the y value is negative 1. So notice that it's not a perfect hash mark that it hits the invariant points, that's fine. And here the question is, approach the asymptotes. Now this is going to be a little bit more conceptual. So what I want you to do is, if you put your pencil on the invariant points, and you think, you know what, as I move left, my original graph is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So as I move left, my graph is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. My answer should be getting smaller. The reciprocal of a bigger, bigger number is smaller. Well, or let's think of it in terms of specific points. Here are the y coordinates 2, the reciprocal of 2 is a half. Here are the y coordinates 4, the reciprocal of that's a quarter. So we actually approach the asymptote. On this side, we approach the asymptote. It's getting really steep. Same thing below. We approach the asymptotes. And it's a nice smooth curve. Typically, we're going to erase a lot of the uh, original blue graph here. Just It was a helper. We really don't want to see that as actually part of the answer. So that's a reciprocal graph. And what it says is, let's talk about the domain and range of this now. So, domain and range. Let's talk about the domain. Domain of x. In reciprocal functions, the only thing that messes with the domain is non-permissible values. So here, it's everything except for x can't equal, sorry, that should be positive too. So everything except x not equaling positive two. If we talk about the range, and we take a look at our graph range of y given that because the y value boots off to positive infinity and negative infinity we get lots of values we get all the values up to 0 up to 0 again because it's that asymptote occurring we get just the restriction that y can't equal 0 in this case domain and range is going to be a little bit silly right now I'm really just based on um, the asymptotes when we get into the next unit that's where it's going to be a little bit more difficult so what I want you to do is see if you can graph this at the very least get the vertical asymptotes and the invariant points and we can talk about what the rest of the graph looks like after that so why don't you give this a try and graph this so I'm gonna do this quite lightly again negative 4 rise 2 run 3 rise 2 run 3 and this time I'm just going to do it in kind of a dotted line because I know I'm going to erase it anyway after. So there's y equals in blue here, 2 thirds x minus 4. We have asymptote, horizontal asymptote on the x-axis again. That doesn't change. We have a vertical asymptote every time our graph crosses or touches the x-axis. So asymptotes, if you want to write them down, 
are the x-axis, which is y equals 0, and the value x equals, what's that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's the two asymptotes. Invariant points, y equals 1, if we trace across, we clip our graph right there. y equals negative 1, we clip our graph right there. Kind of in between. And now approaching asymptotes, we should approach the vertical asymptote up. Horizontal asymptote, we should approach by getting horizontal. Vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote. So again, asymptotes, you never cross asymptotes. You just approach them, get really, really close to them. So, domain and range. Again, x, given that x can't equal, we found out that it's 6. And in this case, the range, y, given that y can't equal 0. So just a quick recap, how are we going to go about this? We're going to graph whatever's in the denominator of the reciprocal. In this case, it's a line. Then the x-axis becomes an asymptote. We draw a vertical asymptote wherever our x-intercepts are. We draw invariant points, so big dots, on y equals positive 1, y equals negative 1, and from there we approach asymptotes. And certainly in class I can talk about why we're approaching asymptotes, why is that shape generated. Actually a pretty quick section, but this ends the notes for graphing reciprocals of linear functions.